So what I'm going to do here is, as I usually do, I'm going to assume that the statement is true for n equals k. So assume true for n equals k. So I'm just going to rehearse the line with k's instead of n. So we've seen this before, no big deal. Here's my assumption. And that's just my first, my, my, I don't have to do anything to that. Now I want to get into my proof, which is the next case, okay? So here comes the proof step. I'm going to do my substitution, and I see there's going to be a k plus 1 over here, and there's going to be a k plus 1 here, and there's going to be a k plus 1 there. Okay. So, how do you set about going for this? Now, like I said, there are two different ways to do this. Importantly, because what I'm about to start is a proof. I need to start from something that I've established as true. Okay? So for instance, a line I can't start with is this line. Right? This should be my last line. Can't be my first one. Right? Which is why I often put these three letters at the front, which you see me do over and over again, to highlight for myself. You can't prove anything off this. You're trying to prove this. So when you have a look at your entire board, and you're like, well, what will my starting point be? The only thing that I, inverted commas, know to be true at the moment is this line. Okay? So this is going to be my starting point. Whereas when we were having a look at like these guys here, right? If you have a series like the question we did in the quiz, you take this and you just start to manipulate the left hand side. Okay? I will show you a way of doing that later on. But for now, I want to start from something I know. And this is it. Okay, so I'm going to write this down. Okay, now remember, the reason I'm starting from this is because of the inductive hypothesis, so I need to state a reason for it. So I'm going to say by assumption. Okay, now where am I trying to get to? There's a few different paths through this, but you can see probably the simplest way to get from this, bless you, to something like this, is on the left-hand side, I notice that the difference between what I've got and what I'm trying to get to is a factor of 12. Do you agree with that? Like that's what this means. This is 12 to the k times 12. So I'm going to take both sides of this inequality and multiply them by 12. Let me do this. Oops. Yeah, no, that's okay. Okay. I can do this because 12 is a positive number, so my inequality stays intact, doesn't change direction or anything like that. Now when I have a look, the left hand side is exactly what I want it to be. Yep, so that's really, really good. Cool, I can ignore the left hand side now, and I'm going to work exclusively with the right. Now what I'm trying to get to, or something like it, is this. Right? That's sort of where I'm heading. Okay? But what you need to understand is if I want to prove, like suppose this was actually a number, like, oh I don't know, say like 10, okay? I want to prove that something is bigger than 10, okay? If I can prove that it's bigger than, like if my final line here has a 10 in it, cool. But if I have something bigger than this, like say 11 or 12 or 1,000, then if I'm bigger than 1,000, I'll be bigger than 10 as well, right? Does that make sense? So what I want over here on the right hand side is either this, or something bigger than that. Does that make sense? That's what I'm aiming for. Now when you look carefully, something bigger is exactly what you've got. Remember, just like we saw, this is 12 lots of 12 to the k. This is 7 lots of 7 to the k. And this is 5 lots of 5 to the k. Now, I have them here, right? In fact, I have more than that to make it clear, because this is a proof. Let's pull out 7 of them, right? So if I have 7 of my 7 of the k's here, well, I actually have another 5, don't I? The 12 breaks into these two parts. So I'm going to put this guy, the 5, over here on the right hand side. Okay? Here, I can break this up as well. I only want 5 of them, I only need 5 of them, so if I break out 5 of them here, well, I've still got leftovers, don't I? How many left over are there? There are 7 of them. Uh, where am I? Right. Let's just try this again. Okay? Do you see what I've done? Maybe get some colours out so you're really, really clear on what's happened here. This 12 lots of 7k I've broken into 
these two pieces, yes? And the 12 lots of 5 to the k, I've broken into these two pieces. You with me? Good. We're almost there. Because what I've got here, right, is 12 to the k plus 1. Oops, wrong color. 12 to the k plus 1 is bigger than, now look at this, right? This is 7 to the k plus 1. And this is 5 to the k plus 1. And then you've got, I'm going to put a big set of brackets around it, all of this stuff. Remember what I wanted on this right hand side is either this or something bigger than this. And I've got this plus some extra stuff, right? So if I'm bigger than all of this, I'll be bigger than this by itself. Right? Does that make sense? So my next and pretty much my last line is therefore 12 to the k plus 1 is bigger than the thing I want as the reason why I can say that is because this thing is making the whole thing bigger. Right? Of course, if it was negative, this wouldn't apply. But I've deliberately crafted it so I can see it's not. Okay? As this part over here, the extra bit, is positive. If it weren't positive, my logic wouldn't hold. Okay? Um, another way you might see this written sometimes is you have this second last line here. Right? And um, don't write this down because it's going to cloud up your book a little bit. But some people put it on the end there. Well, but that is also in turn bigger than this, for the same reason, right? So it's like, well, if A is bigger than B, which is bigger than C, well, that means A is bigger than, is a lot bigger than C, or whatever it is, okay? So you'll sometimes see that notation, and I'm okay with that, but as you guys know, I try and avoid having, the lines are getting monstrous enough already, so I kind of prefer this, okay? And that was it. That was the guts of the question, okay? Um, we have gotten to the K plus one case, right? So therefore, I'll say true for N equals k plus 1, and my final line, proven by and then you go home, okay? Now, how did you feel about that as you went through this, okay? For instance, particularly, I mean, just a rhetorical question, when I got to, say, here, Right? And I was like, okay, where do I go? In what direction do I go? I suggest that we start with the assumption, okay? Because at least I know it to be true. But then we had to do some manipulation here. Now, I wonder for you, like, how obvious did that manipulation seem? And once I had done it, how clear was it what direction you should go in? Now that you've seen it, it's kind of like, well, I've solved this puzzle now, so I can reassemble this one quite easily. But next time, you'll have slightly different logic here, right? So how happy does your mind sit with this? Not everyone likes this method. Uh, I will mention the main reason why I've done it this way is so that, because I mentioned this last time, so that I don't have to muck around with this assumption. I've assumed it, I didn't have to alter it in any way, and I could use it directly in this sort of mechanism. Okay?